Welcome to Food in a Flash. I'm Sharon Glass and today I've got some great ideas for kids dinners and lunches. Simple food that children will love to eat. Things like chicken burgers, barbecue chicken kebabs, fish fingers and a delicious light fruity dessert to finish off. As a self-taught cook and cooking teacher of 27 years, I have a passion for what I do and as a mother I know how rewarding it is to see my family happily tucking into a wonderful meal that I have prepared. I also know what it's like to be a busy mom and still have to think about getting dinner on the table. It's not always easy but it doesn't have to be complicated. That's why I started teaching and writing cookbooks to show people just how wonderful it can be to cook and enjoy and still have time and energy to do the important things in life. I hope I can get you to become confident in the kitchen, have fun and above all create some beautiful simple meals that you and your family will absolutely love. Let's start with our chicken burgers. So what I want to do is just get my pan a little bit hot. Chicken burgers tend to break on a grilling pan, so we don't want to do them on the grilling pan. I've just got a skillet that I'm going to heat, and I'm going to put a little bit of oil just to, so that they don't catch, because I don't want to use a lot of oil for my children. These are some spring onions, and I'm going to process the whole thing in the food processor. A little bit of parsley. They don't like funny things inside. I know my children, when they were little, used to like look and inspect every single thing that was in the, in the food. So chicken mince actually holds itself together really, really well. What's interesting about it, it doesn't need an egg to bind it. So we don't want to over-process this because I've already bought chicken minced, but you could use chicken breasts and just process them with the metal blade in the food processor. To give it lots of flavor, I'm going to add a little bit of soya sauce, a little bit of Worcester sauce, because these are real homemade burgers. It's not the kind that you would buy in the supermarket. A little bit of balsamic, some barbecue sauce, it gives it a really nice taste, and some seasoning. Any seasoning salt works perfectly. Now we just want to pulse it to bind it. Perfect. So they've got a gorgeous colour. I'm going to put a bit of grapeseed oil in my pan and it really is just to coat the bottom of the pan so that the burgers don't catch. I have got a liner in here so that they really won't stick to the bottom of the pan. You've got to be really careful when you work with chicken mince or any raw chicken. First of all, if it's hot, it's a big problem. And second of all, it should be cooked completely through. It's really important when making those burgers that you don't leave anything raw in the middle. Um, the chances of bacteria are very high. So we work with everything quite cleanly. Okay, so I'm going to dip my hands into some water. It just stops it from sticking. My pan needs to be quite nice and hot. And I'm just going to shape these. And they look quite loose, but you'll see that they cook beautifully. And I want to gently cook them so that I get them cooked all the way through. So I just keep rubbing my hands with a little bit of water. And depending on the quantity, this is about 500 grams of chicken mince. You can see that I'm getting five, maybe even six really nice sized patties. So let's make the sauce while those are cooking. The most important thing is not to turn them. What happens when we turn them is that they're going to tend to break. So leave them, let them do their own thing and we'll come back to them in a little while. I like to change it, not just tomato sauce and not just mayonnaise. So what I want to use here is a little bit of a chutney sauce, just to give it a bit more flavor. What we're going to do is we are going to mix some mayonnaise a little bit of sweet chili sauce, not enough to give it a bite, but enough to give it some flavor. A little bit of chutney. A little bit of lemon juice. Just whisk that together. 
and that is going to go onto my buns. Now I could do these on their own and just serve them with this chutney mayonnaise and that would be quite delicious. And let's check our patties. That stove mustn't be too high. They're starting to set and what I can see is that they're getting a little bit white at the bottom which means that they're good enough to turn. And if you can see the colour is just beautiful. So the secret is to leave them. We tend to want to turn all the time and really it likes to do its own thing. Beautiful. These are done. And the test is if you press them and they're firm, then you know that they're actually cooked. And also the juice coming out of there is clear. So as long as they're firm and cooked through, they're ready to go. So we've got white buns, whole wheat are also good. And if you could get a nice wheat free, because some children are quite allergic to quite a lot of wheat. We're going to spread it on both sides with some of this chutney mayonnaise. Okay, let's pop one onto, onto the buns. I know my son, even at 15, would be more than happy to come home to that. He'd say, Ma, why don't you make these more often? Tomato, an option, because sometimes children don't like tomatoes. I like them for color. So we're going to top it with a little piece of tomato and a lettuce leaf. And I always like to put a kebab stick just to hold the whole thing together. And we'll just put a stick through the middle to hold them in place. Looks good enough to eat. When we come back, we'll be making barbecue chicken kebabs and some grilled fish fingers. Don't go away. Hi and welcome back to Food in a Flash. We've made some delicious chicken burgers and now I'm going to do some baked fish fingers and some grilled barbecue chicken kebabs. So let's start with our fish fingers. I've cooked some hake, just simple plain hake. I've just boiled it and I'm mashing it because we're actually going to make some little fingers that we're going to bake in the oven. Much healthier than actually frying. So the fish is quite flaked. I've got it nice and soft. I've got some mashed potato and I literally boiled the potato and then just mashed it quite finely and I've got some butternut puree you could use carrot or butternut and it's going to give it a really nice color okay and I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil because I need to bind it with something and I don't need egg because that potato is going to mash it as well a little bit of chopped parsley just for some color and some salt and pepper so we want to give this some flavor as well. Now we want to just mash that all together. And then these need to really go in the fridge if you can, because they firm up in the fridge. I'm going to pop them onto a baking tray and I've lined it with my my usual Teflon liner which I love. I'm just going to pop some gloves on because it's just easier to work with them and then my hands are clean and I'm going to shape them into like sausages so just get them into a nice shape quite firm and if you really wanted to 
An option would be to dip them into some cornflake crumbs, but I don't think they need them. I think that they're delicious just as they are. And I would serve this just with a little salad. So it's a nice healthy option for fish instead of always serving fried fish. Right, so I've got nine really nice fish fingers. My oven's ready. I'm just gonna grab some olive oil spray, spray them to give them a nice gloss. Better than drizzling with more olive oil. And let's put them in the oven. While the fish fingers are baking, I've been putting together some chicken kebabs that we're going to grill. And what I like to use are thighs. I find them a little bit more juicy, a little bit more tender. So I buy the boneless thigh fillets. And I'm just putting about four, I've cut them in half. I'm putting about four on each kebab stick. And I'm using a metal kebab stick because then they tend not to burn under the grill. If you are going to use the wooden ones, you need to soak them for at least half an hour before you use them. Otherwise, they will disintegrate into cinders. And what I like to do is just separate these so that they're not right on top of each other because otherwise that sauce is not going to get in. Now, a thigh takes longer than a chicken breast. So I want to roast these or grill them actually for about 20 minutes, maybe 25, but I'm going to turn them during the whole process. And I could just take barbecue sauce, brush them with barbecue sauce, but because I like to just add that little bit of extra, what I'm going to do is make up my own barbecue sauce. So I've got a ready-made one, and I'm going to take some tomato sauce, a little bit of Worcester sauce, and a little bit of soya sauce, and you can really just make up your own as you wish. But what's nice about this is that it's just not straight out of a bottle. It's just got a little bit more flavor. So let's just give it a whisk. And we want to brush it onto those kebabs. I'm doing one side only. And I will season afterwards. I don't want to season it now. So I'm just going to brush them. Now, when we grill, we always want to grill right under the element. The important thing with grilling is that that element is red, because if it's not red, it's not actually grilling, so there's no point. I'm not doing them in a grilling pan, because if I put them on a grilling pan, the sugar in all the sauces is just gonna caramelize, and they are going to burn, and my pan is going to burn, and it's gonna be a disaster, so this is a much easier way to go. We put a little bit of black pepper, and a little bit of salt, because they don't really need much more seasoning. And we'll turn them halfway, so about 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes, and that's all there is to it. So we're gonna leave those to grill and bake, and when we come back, we're gonna finish off with a delicious, sweet little something. Welcome back to Food in a Flash. We are making a delicious children's meal tonight. And we have got some fish fingers that we baked. They're ready, they've been in the oven for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna plate them up and then check my chicken kebabs which are grilling. So, these baked for about 20 minutes. They're beautiful, golden, very little oil as you saw. And they are quite delicious and I'm sure any child will want to eat them. I'm just gonna give them a little bit of color with some chopped parsley and I've made some wild rice to go with them. And if they really want tomato sauce, I'm sure you won't mind giving them that. Let's check our chicken kebabs. These are gorgeous. They are brown, 
golden and ready to plate. So I'm going to put them on a beautiful platter. Just pile them high because we want them to look really appealing. And I'm going to take a little bit of that sauce and spoon it over because it just adds to the flavour. And then I've made some potato wedges that we're going to just add here as well. These are crisp and golden with a few sweet potatoes as well. And to finish the whole thing, a little bit of parsley. To roast the potatoes, I drizzled them with some olive oil, coarse salt and black pepper. Put them in the oven for about 45 minutes. Tossed them when they were golden and then just made sure they had lots of colour. Right, we're going to finish off with some sorbet terrine. It's just a little sweet temptation on your tongue. And what I've done is I've made some in little loaf tins already using three different coloured sorbets. It's so simple that all you really want to do is just layer them. If the, if the sorbet is a little bit soft, then let it set and do each layer individually. It looks so colourful when it's finished. And I'm just spreading this on top and making three layers. And then we want to freeze it. Perfect. You're going to need to leave these overnight or a good couple of hours to get them really nice and set. And these ones I've already made. So we're just going to run a little knife around these and pop them onto a platter. These can also be made in one big loaf tin if you like or even in a round. Um, it's quite nice to have the little ones, but sometimes you may not have time. And I'm really not fussed if they're not absolutely perfect because I've got some beautiful berries to put on top. And as long as it looks and tastes delicious, I'm sure they won't have a problem eating them. So let's put another one. We need to work quite fast with these. And whatever's left inside, we're just going to smooth on top and make it look pretty. I've got some berries. We're just going to sprinkle those over and around. Make it look beautiful. There we go. It looks good enough to eat. Just finish with these. We've got a beautiful meal. Great ideas for children. We've made some grilled chicken kebabs with potato wedges, sweet potato and ordinary potatoes. We've got some chicken burgers with a chutney mayonnaise, some baked fish fingers, which I'm serving with wild rice, and some sorbet terrines to finish off these great ideas. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please join me next week when I've got some great brying ideas. We'll be making grilled veal chops, a salmon with, topped with a mango salsa, amongst others. Don't miss it. You've seen her do it on TV. Now learn to cook with Sharon at one of her fun interactive cooking workshops. From the very basics of cooking to full dinner party meals or cakes and bakes, Sharon Glass has a cooking class or workshop just for you. For more information or to book a spot, visit www.thehomechannel.co.za and follow the link to Food in a Flash. 
And for one lucky Home Channel viewer, Sharon is offering an interactive workshop for you and seven of your friends. All you have to do to enter is log on to our website, fill in the online entry form and you could stand a chance to win this great prize. Entries for the competition close on Sunday the 15th of July.